Hey, I'm back, and happy Easter to you. Uh, we're back into Python and the creating of a class, only in this case what we're going to add is a list of somethings. Um, this is a continuing discussion of how to perhaps capture some level of abstraction within your program. Again, something apart from Tinkter. If you're working with Tinkter, continue. The whole focus of this marking period is finishing up, perhaps creating something for your create task. And the two elements in the create task are dealing with an abstraction or putting abstraction in your program and or going ahead and uh, putting in an algorithm. So I'm still on the abstraction method. Let's uh, take a look a little bit because I have enhanced a bit of the something class. So we'll just slide over here and say class something and you can put anything in inventory item, patient, it could be any element that you want uh, grades, students, whatever class you wanted to create. Um, and so a class has a constructor with a, let me get this out, uh, the name in it with two underscores before and after. Uh, shout out to Sean Murray who put one underscore before and one underscore after. And uh, it takes the parameters, uh, self, name, number, another number. These last three could be uh, related to anything that you're creating. Notice that we create class variables using the word self, self.name equal name, setting uh, the class variable name, which is equal to the argument name. So this name is going into the class variable and that continues and we added as in our last video uh, the two numbers and return them. What I've added is uh, three getter methods uh, corresponding to the three class variables. Get name returns self dot name. Get number uh, returns self dot number and get another number returns uh, self dot another number and so we'll see later why these getter methods or uh, methods that will return the value of one of the properties of the class and we're referring to a class from our understanding having properties in this case something has a name a number and another number and it also has methods which are ways in which the class can behave. So add item would add the two numbers and the getter methods would return the values for those properties. Well, continuing on a little further, I created a class called a collection of somethings. And again, it has a constructor method with underscore underscore in it taking just itself and it sets up a list which is self dot items equal square brace square brace I chose a list because you know that it is mutable I can uh, change elements within the list um, and what I did is also set up a method that could add an element to a list so it takes a new item and appends it using the append self dot items dot append new item and then uh, what I did is I said and and by the way this collection of somethings is exactly that a collection of somethings so whether it's something being an inventory item with a number on hand and a number needed, a patient with a uh, age and an outcome, um, or a student with a number.
number of grades or um, and and therefore like the collection could be uh, a class of students a um, number of patients in a particular trial uh, a class could be the uh, total inventory not just the item okay so we have a collection of some things here and in this case what I'm going to do is add all the first numbers of the something so I'm going to say total equals zero and go for placeholder and self dot items which will go with that for loop and extract each element of the items list and place it in a placeholder variable and you go placeholder dot get number add it to the total and return it okay so basically I'm doing a summing operation for all the something first uh, numbers in in the uh, in the list items so it's uh, pretty neat okay um, so now I create a big collection of somethings, big collection, collection of somethings, and I add an item calling the add item method up there, and I give it a something, which is a, th a thing, which has uh, 35 and 23 as the two numbers, and I add another item, and it's a something, another thing with 25 and 10. And when I call add first numbers, 35 and 25 are added together and it should output 60. So let me reduce the visibility and run it and see if that's the case. And it is 60. So it's a pretty tightly wound program. Um, and in this, the advantage is that it has two levels of abstraction, which are um, a class representing a, a member item within a list and a class representing uh, the list. And while the operation that we have is actually quite trite to add the first um, number given for each something. There are opportunities uh, to really take that math and that algorithm of math uh, to the next level. Um, and the idea of going ahead and and graphing out, um, you know, the standard deviations if you're in a statistics class or uh, looking at the average age of um, taking an average or uh, other statistical um, methods performed on your your base item in this case something is is definitely uh, worthwhile so um, I'm gonna just give you a look at the whole thing here if you want to pause it here you could and you get the the whole thing well not really I guess um, maybe I'll just upload it to the assignment which is to go ahead and create a collection of the uh, class that you created um, and to upload it good to see you again and um, look forward to hearing about your individual projects in the days and weeks coming. Thank you.